person who necessarily is not connected to God in that form and type of way to be like, okay, this is how you're supposed to just, you know, not to get to that point to where you're going crazy, something like that. No? First of all, yeah. First of all, yeah. Form. Let me clarify what you're saying. You're, are you talking about a person that is contemplating suicide? Is well, not necessarily suicide. No, what I'm saying oh. is like when you say to somebody who is not at that point to where they're ready to, to, it, to yeah, to, to, to be like, okay, well, God is God has got me. He understands oh, my, and my frustration, my anger, my, my all the questions that everybody has when we have death. They're dealing with death, but they're dealing with it without God. Yes. Well, like, how, do you, how, do you, how do you say? Us, the Bible tells us as Christians, we grieve as those, we don't grieve, we don't grieve as those who have no hope. Right. right. If you don't have God, you hope, you're going to hold on to the things. Yeah. You, that's all you have. So we as Christians have to intercede for them, be there for them, because most... Intercede means to hear yeah. actually the person that's actually going to pray for them. Yeah. Love people like, like, but, but for, instance, for me, I'm not, I'm connected to God, but I'm not deeply, like, you know, spiritually into it, like I'm supposed to be at my point in my life or whatever. And how do you say, like, at first talking to her, talking to her, uh, her kid's dad, you know what I mean? Like, how do you, like, he don't... Just pray for him. You know what I mean? Like, as far as, I mean, I know I can pray for him and stuff like that, but for it's coming for me, so it's like, I, he's like, okay, yeah, I'll, you, you know, I'll pray. You'll he doesn't pray for have to necessarily know that you're praying. Yeah, that's right, because right. mm -hmm. more so at that time, at that point in their life, it's going to come up to them where they have to let it go. It's not nothing we can do for them because obviously they don't want to let it go. they still stuck in that mm -hmm. part. They're, yeah, they're just they're not ready. Maybe they can't. Right, they can't. Know, right. right now they can't because, so like, the hard time. Uh -uh. That's like yeah, my grandmother. Right. They was like always. You better, you know, you got the saying like you better treat your mother good because when she gone, you gonna be like you gonna be all messed up about it. And my aunt, like she always get drunk and like if she stopped drinking now, thank God. You know what I'm saying? But he he did that. You don't God. mind us being take the about no. your aunt being drunk? No. Oh, okay. Like she's on the you know it's on the internet. Mm -hmm. Is this cool? I'm because uh, I can cut this part out. Right. If you, I'm cool. I okay. just don't but say it's her just, name. It's just like more social. When she gets to that point, all the time she was drinking, she was always, oh, my mom, I missed her. And just da, da, da. But you treated her so wrong when she was here. And now you grieving and keep it's on grieving guilt. over it. Guilt. And, guilt. It's, you know, and it's your guilt, guilt is getting to you. You know, it's like. And, and drinking is probably her coping mechanism. Oh, That's yeah, what she and it's like, it's coping mechanism. Thing. And everybody yeah. always used to tell her, like, you need to treat <laughs> your mom. <laughs> Like you need to treat your mom better while she's here because when she gone, you're going to be the one that's missing her and everybody else going to be moved on with it. And now thank God that she that came out of it. She didn't stop drinking. She's a better person, you know. And she don't talk about my, my grandmother as much no more or anything like that. It's just like we was all like one day we was just like was so surprised to be like, because we when she when she got to that point we all were like oh come on y'all we gotta go because she about to she about to start this rampage just leave her in the room by herself because we gotta go like I used to be like dang what's she going through I, this is a little kid I used to be like what is she going through is this this wow mom is this right you know is this right but now to see my aunt now that I'm older it's like hi auntie I'll be like happy to see her now I'll be like so much like. Breathing <laughs> takes time. Wow, as a little, time. She said as a little kid she was sitting there. You said you were looking like, yeah, like why is she doing, doing this? this? There's other, there's people less watching right. going through this. And okay. you had other children, didn't you? Right, right. My oldest son was um, 18 when my son died. And then my youngest was four months old. Oh. And, yeah. And then I also had family members that were not as committed to Christ or even, you know, have committed their life to Christ. And, and so... It, uh, so I, I I knew that I needed to walk this out for them as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, you were talking about, you know, how do you say, if your life is for Christ, and you're saying that your life is for Christ, your life is a witness, and they're going to see that. There's a family member that is unsaved and has taken my son's death very, very personally. But in that, because of how they've seen me walking through it with God, mm -hmm. Now they are asking questions about God. Now they are turning to God, and they're and they're now praying. And okay, well, I want I want to be with Him again. I want to be with you know your son again. With you know what their relationship is to Him. And I, I just pray to God that I'm, I'm I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, and I'm and I'm going the right way. That I need to 
that I need to go. So there's not always words because if they don't have Christ in their life right at that particular time, they might not receive him right away only because they're having those questions. Okay, God, I hear you're supposed to be loving, but okay, I don't see no love here. Mm -hmm. But you keep living your life for Christ and your life is going to be that witness for them a lot of times. Like, is it necessarily saying you're stuck when, like for instance for me, I'll be at home sometimes and just start crying because my aunt my granny, you know, is it necessarily saying I'm still stuck? No. 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 It's, it's a process. process. Right. right. It's okay. Time. It's okay. And, then, and, and the, I think the thing that we need to be very careful with, it might take somebody 10 years to get through it. Right. It might take somebody, I'm not, I don't know if I got through it in two days, but it might take somebody a year. When my, when my brother was killed, my brother was died on, on a Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday, my other brother had a U-Haul truck backed up to his house to clean out his house. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing? And I'm just appalled. I'm like, what? Well, he has, and they're like, well, we need everybody to come over. Can you get people to come over and clean out the house? And I'm like, and so I think I'm going to, I said, I'll go over there. I walk in the door. Now, he's walking in, and he grieved, but little did I understand he was grieving a different way. Right. His way was he had the house out of sight. Mm -hmm. So I'm walking in the house. And I walk in his bedroom and I just lose it. I had a meltdown. They had to just put it, let's just take, let's get her out the bed so we can get the bed out the house. They had to get rid of me because I became a distraction. I was in the way. But I am moving forward. I am moving on. He can't, it's been a little, a, almost a year and a half now, a year and a half today. He can't look at his web, his Facebook page. So we deep, we grieve in different ways, right? And, at different and I look at his Facebook page all the time. But we process it differently. We're going to do it differently. And some people, we all grieve differently. Right. Yes. Don't put that kind of pressure on yourself. Yes. Right. Okay pray cry. about it. Pray right. about it. My dad's been dead ten years. I still cry about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a difference. It's a big difference. It's stuck. Stuck means you can't even move it forward. You right. can't function. You can't do anything. You just. And here's an example also. One of the emotions that I deal with, and I've noticed this recently because of certain situations provoked it, mm -hmm. is anger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm ready, to, you know, I just be ready to. What? Yes. Yes. What? Right. You know, I'm, I'm very much out. What? You know? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know I like, okay, so then we got this. <laughs> pray to this right. and what? Just, just, just to pray. <laughs> but, but what if you never so. grieve, like, like never? Like, my, my great-great-grandmother raised me, and when she passed, it passed when I was 17. And, like, when the nursing home called me and told me she was dead, I ain't crying. At the funeral, I ain't cry. At the cemetery, I ain't cry. I'm 37 years old, and I still ain't cry. And I don't know why. Like, she raised me. She took care of me, but... Was but, your relationship strained? Yeah. Was yeah. she? She was mean to me. She always compared me to my mom and always, you know, downplaying me. And then when I got pregnant with my oldest son at a young age, she wanted to try to marry me off and ship me away somewhere, but that didn't work too well. And it right. just... But when my great-uncle died, when my great-uncle died, which was her husband... I mean, I was just like distraught. Like, but when but she the died, relationship with him was a lot different than her. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. He 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 provided. He cared for you. He saw value in you. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. With the grandmother, could it be that because of all the hurt maybe you had or strain that she caused from her, it was kind of like I was kind of happy she was gone, maybe? Because that's what I kept thinking at the funeral, like. Cause after we went to the cemetery, we was at the house eating and stuff. Everybody kept saying, "Trina, why are you not crying?" I'm like, "I don't know. Why you ask me dumb questions?" But I still think about it today. Like I'm, I never shed a tear. I never, I never even think but about it. That doesn't her. mean you never will, because it might be something that you, something else that you're dealing with, and you can't get to that part because you're still dealing with. Your, have you released her? Have you forgiven her? That's that's my question. Mm -hmm. Have you forgiven? That's, that's why you have to. Yeah. It's almost like somebody did you like just what you get, you know, like because you haven't you haven't moved past that. And once you move past, you know, and give that forgiveness, then that part might come up. Yeah. Ask God to teach you how to forgive her. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna see a breakthrough in some other things. Because the model prayer in Matthew six yes. 
forgive us as we forgive others. So you don't want to hold anything, um, have anything blocking your relationship with God yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. So ask God to, have, uh, to teach you how to forgive her. And if you drop down to 14 and 15, when we forgive our brothers, God will forgive us. When we don't forgive them, God does not forgive us. Mm -hmm. The other thing is forgiveness, as I said before, is the most wonderful release you will ever mm -hmm. experience in your life. It's greater than the birth of a child. It's greater than a marriage. Because it opens up your life. You get to breathe again. I got to breathe after not breathing from August 3rd till that day in November. I walked outside and saw the sun. August 3rd. Are you serious? August 3rd was the day my brother died. August 3rd was the day that my friend died too. I remember that. I remember. Wow. Um, but forgiveness, it's, there are no, I can't even, I can't even describe it to you. Forgiveness is, it will, it will open up your life in such a way, you will be, you, when you look back, you'll be like, I was walking in that? How was I surviving? We're actually going to have a, uh, our topic. Coming up next season, we'll, we're dealing with forgiveness and unforgiveness and things like that. So, and a lot of times people think that if they forgive somebody, that is actually letting them off the hook, they get away with something. But it is for us. And I know it sounds warped. <laughs> like how? Okay, how? Can you do this to me? And I gotta forgive you. But ask yourself this question, I ask myself, not about my death, I'm talking about something my life. I've done enough stuff in my life that I don't want to take no chances. And God ain't going to forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> Is life after death. Last call, last 